Winter solace is an astronomical phenomenon marking the shortest day and the longest night of the year. The northern, northern hemisphere, this is in December solace, and in the southern hemisphere is in the June solace. No one really knows sh sure how long ago humans recognized the winter solace and began heralding it as a turning point. The day that marks the return of the sun to the northern hemisphere. Many cultures the world over perform solace ceremonies. At their root, the ancient fear that the falling light would never return unless humans intervene with an anxious vigil or antique celebration. Most ancient cultures built astronomical observations, tombs, temples, cairns, among others, to align with the solaces and the equinoxes. The winter solace is immensely important because the people were economically dependent on monitoring the progress of the seasons. Starvation was common during the first months of the winter, January to April, Northern Hemisphere, or July to October in the Southern Hemisphere also known as the famine months. In temperate climates, the midwinter festival was the last feast celebration before deeper, before the deep winter began. Most cattle were slaughtered so they would not have been fed during, so they would not have to be fed during the winter months. So it was almost the only time of the year when a plentiful supply of fresh meat was available. The majority of the wine and beer made during the year was finally fermented and ready for drinking at that time. The concentration of the services were not always on the day commencing at midnight or at dawn, but at the beginning of the pagan day, which in many cultures fell on the previous eve. Because the event was seen as a reversal of the sun's ebbing presence in the sky, concepts of the birth or rebirth of the sun gods have been common, and in cultures which used the Cilic calendars based on the winter solace. The year as reborn was celebrated in reference to life, death, rebirth deities or new beginnings, such as the Hagamini Redding, a new year clearing, cleaning tradition, also reversal is yet another frequent theme in a Saturnalia slave and master reversals. There is much new scholarship about the neo Neolithic people and their amazing culture. For example, it now looks like as though writing is much more ancient than we earlier thought, as much, uh, as, much as 10,000 years old. Neolithic people were the first farmers. Their lives were intimately tied to the seasons and the cycle of the harvest, which would mean that they were attuned to the movement of celestial objects and seasons. Scholars have not yet found proof, though, that these people had the skill to pinpoint a celestial event like a solace. Earliest markers of time found from the these ancient peoples were not just carved into bone that appear to count the cycles of the moon, but perhaps they watched the movement of the sun as well as the moon, and perhaps they celebrated it with fertility rites and fire festivals, with offerings and prayers to the gods and goddesses. Five thousand years ago, ancient Egyptians celebrated the rebirth of the sun at a time of year. At this time of year, they set the length of the festival of 12 days to reflect the 12 divisions in the sun calendar. They decorated with greenery using palms with 12 shoots as a symbol of the completed year since a palm was thought to put forth a shoot each month. The midwinter festival of the ancient Egyptians celebrated the birth of Horus, the son of Isis, the divine mother goddess. The celebration was 12 days long, reflecting their 12-month calendar. The concept took firm, firm root in many cultures in 567 AD. Christians adopted it. Church leaders proclaimed the 12 days from December 25th as Epiphany, as a sacred festive season. 
The Mesopotheans celebrated winter with a 12-day festival of renewal designed to help the god Murdoch tame the monsters of chaos for one more year. The solace has been a special moment of an annual cycle for some cultures even during Neolithic times. Astronomical events were often used to guide activities such as the mating of animals, the sowing of crops, and the monitoring of winter reserves for food. Many cultural mythologies and traditions are derived from this. This is attested by the physical remains of the layouts of the late Neolithic and Bronze Age archaeological sites such as Stonehenge in England and Newgrange in Ireland. The pagan Scandinavian and Germanic people of Northern Europe celebrated a 12-day midwinter holiday called Yule. Many modern Christian tr Christmas traditions such as the Christmas tree, the Christmas wreath, the Yule log, and others are directed descendants of Yule customs. Scandinavians still call Yule Jule. In English, the word Yule is often used in a combination with the seasons Yuletide, a usage first recorded in 900. Yule is the time of the greatest darkness and greatest darkness and the longest night of the year. The winter solace has been associated with the birth of a divine king long before the rise of Christianity. Since the sun is considered to represent the male uh, divinity in pagan traditions, this time is celebrated as the return of the sun god, where he is reborn of the goddess. It is believed that the celebration of this day was a worship of these peculiar, peculiar days, interpreted as the reawakening of nature. The Yule, particularly God, was Jondler, which is one of Odin's many names. The concept of Yule occurs in a tribute poem, poem to Harfagner from about AD 900, where someone said, drinking jewel. Joblot is the most solemn sacrifice feast. At the Jobliti, sacrifices were given to the gods to earn blessings on the forthcoming germinating crops. Jobliti was eventually integrated into the Christian Christmas as a remainder from this Viking era. The midsummer is still important in the Scandinavian and hence vividly celebrated. Saul and Vicious, the unconquered son, was originally a Syrian god who was later adopted as the chief god of the Roman Empire under Emperor Arnulian. His holiday is traditionally celebrated on December 25th as are several gods associated with the winter solace in many pagan traditions. The Christmas carol in the bleak midwinter refers to the winter solace in its title. Although the instant of the solace can be calculated, direct observation of the solace by amateurs is impossible because the sun moves too slowly or appears to stand still. The meaning of solace. However, by use of astronomical data tracking, the precise timing of its occurrence is now knowledge. One cannot directly detect the precise instance of solace by definition. One cannot observe that an object has stopped moving until one later observes that it has not moved further than from the preceding spot or that it has moved from opposite direction. The Egyptian and Persian tradition merged in ancient Rome, the festival to the ancient god of seed time Saturn. The people gave themselves up to wild joy. The festive, they, fest, they feasted, gave gifts, and decorated their homes with greenery. The usual order of the year was to let go of grudges and quarrels. Wars were in, interrupted or postponed. Businesses, courts, schools closed. Rich were poor. Rich and poor were equal. 
Slaves were served by masters. Children headed the family. Cross-dressing and masquerades, merriment of all kinds prevailed. A mock king, the lord of misrule, was crowned. Candles and lamps chased away spirits in, of darkness. As Roman culture became a more licentious, so did Saturnalia, an ancient Roman festival in honor of the deity Saturn, held on December 17th of the Julian calendar, and later expanded with festivities through December 23rd. The holiday was celebrated with a sacrifice at the Temple of Saturn, the Roman Forum, and a public banquet followed by private gift giving, continual partying and carnival atmosphere that overturned Roman social norms. Gambling was permitted and masters provided table services for their slaves. The poet Catilius called it the best of the days. In Roman mythology, Saturn was an architect cultural deity who is said to have reigned over the world of the golden age when humans enjoyed the spontaneous bounty of the earth without labor in the state of innocence the revelries of saturnalia were supposed to reflect the conditions of the lost mystical age not all of them desirable the greek equivalent was the chronea Although probably best known Roman holiday, Saturnalia was a whole is not described from the beginning to end in any single ancient source. Modern understanding of this festival is pieced together from several accounts dealing with various aspects. The Saturnalia was the, a, the dramatic setting of a multi-volume work of that name by Mark. Cubius, Macrobius, I'm sorry, a Latin writer that late antiquity, from a late antiquity who is the major source for information about the holiday. In one of the interpretations in Macrobius' work, Saturnalia is a festival of light leading to the winter solace, with the abundant presence of candles symbolizing the quest for knowledge and truth. The renewal of the light and the coming of the new year was celebrated in the later Roman Empire at the Dies Natales of Sol Invictus, the birthday of the unconquerable sun, on December 25th. The popularity of Saturnalia continued in the 3rd and 4th centuries AD, and as the Roman Empire came under Christian rule, some of its customs have influenced the seasonal celebrations surrounding Christmas and New Year. Native Americans, Native Americans have winter solace rites. The sun images uh, you see on the screen right now are from a rock painting of the Chumash tribe who occupied coastal California for thousands of years before the Europeans arrived. Solaces were tremendously important to them, and the winter solace celebration lasted several days. In the zodiac, the winter solace marks the first day of Capricorn.